We're trying to construct IO from low degree multilinear map. In fact, this is a soft merge between two papers where in the first paper we achieve it from five linear maps using a uh, locality 5 PRG and in the second paper we in fact do from just three lin linear map or trilinear map using blockwise local PRGs. Okay, I'll tell you what they are. Okay, so first the goal here is to construct indistinguishability of fascination. We want to have this type of fascinators that can compile a circuit into another one that have the same functionality but now the compiled circuit become unintelligible. And here by unintelligible we mean that the fast gate circuit should hide one bit of information, that is, which of the following two equivalent circuits is being fast gated. By equivalent, we mean that the two circuits should have the same size to start with, also they should have the identical truth table. And if that's the case, then we want the fast gated circuits to be computationally indistinguishable. Even though this notion really hides only one bit of information, it turns out to be extremely powerful. A long line of work has shown that I.O. with the addition of some mild assumption like one-way function can already imply almost all of cryptomania and beyond. And furthermore, it seems to have created a new world of fastopia where there are many even more powerful tools like functional encryption, succinct gobbling of tooling machines, etc. So a central question is how can we construct I.O.? And a very successful paradigm so far is to climb up the ladder of multilinear maps. And at the bottom of this, lab, uh, of this ladder are cyclic groups without or with the bilinear pairing that we all know and love, that we know they have huge implication in cryptomania. When we try to generalize these cyclic groups to let them have higher degree pairing, and this will give us multilinear map. And multilinear map will enable us to do even more amazing things. The simplest example being that trilinear map will let us do four party key exchange. And if you turn the knob of multilinearity all the way up to polynomial degree, then you get IO and a fastopia. This is great. The only problem here is that all the candidate construction of multilinear map so far their security is far from what we would like them to have, as demonstrated in multiple attacks. Therefore, in this work, our starting point is to ask a different question. That is, what are the minimum objects that in fact imply I.O.? Well, this high degree multilinear map, they're very powerful. However, they're heavy to lift. Okay? And the hope is that maybe we don't need its full mighty power. And as a wise man once said is that give me a point to stand and a lever, I can lift up everything. The idea here is perhaps we can lift up those high degree multilinear map using just low degree ones. And in order to do that, we need the help of local PRGs, which at the surface seems completely irrelevant. And at the same time, we're also trying to seek for weak assumptions on those multilinear maps that we can base the security of IO on. With this paradigm in mind, let me quickly survey to you the history of I.O. construction through the lens of degree. The first generation of construction always used polynomial degree multilinear map, or in fact the stronger variant of graded encoding schemes. Their security are often analyzed in the ideal model or use the strong Uber assumption, with some exceptions. Last year that I give the first construction of I.O. based on just constant degree graded encodings with a simple DDH-like assumption called a joint SXDH. And to do that, for the first time, the local PRG came into the picture. And in this work, in the first paper, we first reduced the concrete constant degree needed all the way down to five using a locality five PRG and also weaken the security assumption on the multilinear map to just SXDH. And the important feature of this construction is that for the first time, the degree of the multilinear map depends solely on the locality of the PRG and they equal, whereas previous construction are not tight. However, even with this tightness, we hit a wall because locality four PRG simply do not exist. And therefore, in the second paper, we, pro we propose a new and relaxed notion of locality called blockwise locality. And we show that it still suffice for constructing I.O. and hence give us I.O. from trilinear maps 
and the blockwise locality three PRGs. And at this point, we hit another wall, which is block locality two PRG unfortunately do not exist, and this bars us from constructing I.O. from just bilinear maps. Okay. Before I move on, I want to mention that the first paper is concurrent with the work of Anand and Shahai. They also construct I.O. from degree five graded encoding schemes. However, their security analysis is more or less in the ideal model, where we only rely on SXDH. Okay. So let me tell you more formally what we achieve, okay? So this object of multilinear map allows us to really encode the ring elements in groups by putting them in the exponent. And I will use this bracket notation here, where the element encoded is in the bracket and the index of the group is in the lower right corner. Such encoding naturally supports homomorphic addition and subtraction and also allows us to test whether encoding encodes zero or not. And the magic is really in the homomorphic multiplication. Now we can take encoding in different groups and homomorphically multiply to get an encoding in the target group of the product. And the degree of the multilinear map is exactly how many encodings that we can multiply together. In the case of trilinear map, we can multiply together just three encodings. What about the SXDH assumption? It's also very simple. It's basically requiring the basic DDH assumption to hold in each individual source group. Take any source group L. We want the encoding of the DDH tuple A, B, and A, B to be indistinguishable to encoding of just random elements. And this should hold even when the generator in all source groups are available. Okay. So the main theorem in the first paper says that we can construct I.O. from sub-exponentially secure SXDH assumption on degree D multilinear map with the help of a sub-exponentially secure locality D PRG and the sub-exponential LWE. And note that here the degree of the multilinear map needed really equals to the locality. And the main theorem in the second paper basically says we can in fact swap off this locality DPRG with this weaker block locality DPRG. With these assumptions, now you can just plug in a locality 5 PRG to get I.O. from 5 linear map, plug in a blockwise locality 3 PRG to get I.O. from trilinear map. So what are those blockwise local PRGs? Well, first let us recall local PRGs. Well, they allow us to expand the seed to a pseudo-random output which is polynomially longer. And we say a function has locality L if each individual output bit depends on at most L input bits. And there has been a long line of research studying what is the lowest locality we need for PRGs. Currently, for locality 5, we have candidate construction but for locality four, they do not exist. When we go to blockwise locality, as the name suggests, we're gonna swap each input bit with an input block, restricted to only containing logarithmic number of bits. Now a function has blockwise locality L if each output bit depends on only L input blocks. Note that such a function can in fact have very high locality, actual locality but it still has the special structure of being local with respect to the input blocks, and that's what we can exploit. So in the second paper, we give pre preliminary study on blockwise local PRGs, with the natural candidate being just use Goldwrath's local function, where input bits are replaced with input blocks. These functions are usually parameterized with a bipartite graph, that has exactly degree L. And together with a set of predicates, one for each output bit. When you want to evaluate the ith output bit yi, you simply take the ith predicate and evaluate it on the set of input blocks that correspond to the neighbor of node i in the graph G. Okay, so this is a very simple and natural construction. What can we say about them? It turns out that when the locality is high enough, which is three or above, there exists those bipartite graphs that have very good expansion. And with this, we can show that there in fact exists blockwise locality three small bias generator. 
And we can show that this type of function, when you use a suitable non-degenerate predicate, they are assumed already to be one way and pseudo-random using known assumption in the literature of local PRGs. And furthermore, we can show some harness amplification results. This is nice. And suddenly, when you go to blockwise locality equals to two, all these properties go away because they do not have, we do not have good graph with uh, good expansion. And furthermore, it turns out that two recent work show that such PRGs do not exist, except to find a very, very tiny window of expansion that are not known to be sufficient for constructing I.O. Okay. And I do not have much more time to delve into the blockwise local PRG. I think they are very, very natural primitive and they deserve more study. Um, but in the rest of the talk, I focus on giving you an idea of how we can construct I.O. from this very low degree multilinear map with the help of those block local PRGs. And I will only be able to give you some flavor or high level idea of how this is done. Okay. In order to do so that we will need to use, go through an intermediate object which is secret key functional encryption for computing this very simple computation of only degree D polynomials. And we'll need this scheme to have very good efficiency that we'll talk about shortly. And for short, I'll call them degree DFE. Okay? Therefore, in the first step, we want to bootstrap from degree DFE all the way to I.O. And this is the place where we need the help of those PRGs. And what we give is the first tight bootstrapping technique, which makes sure that the degree of the FE equals to the locality or the block locality. And the key idea here is preprocessing. And then in the next step, we will implement those degree of e that we need using exactly degree D multilinear map. And here again, for the first time, we give a tight FE construction where the degree of the multilinear map is exactly the degree of the function we want to compute. And the key idea here is to somehow recursively compose a very simple primitive functional encryption that computes only in the product. I'll give you some high level idea of how each step is done, and let's start with the first. So recall that functional encryption are basically normal encryption scheme, but augmented with this capability of giving partial decryption keys. We can implement, we can encrypt messages as usual, but now additionally we can give out partial secret key that are associated with some functional circuit. And when decryption, with this partial decryption key, what you get is the output of the function or circuit evaluated on the encrypted message as opposed to the message itself. And the security guarantee is that still ciphertext of two different sets of message should be indistinguishable, even if you are given with multiple secret keys, as long as the outputs are the same. And therefore you cannot tell just simply by decrypting. It turns out that the functional encryption are intimately connected with I.O. As shown by three elegant work is that give me one key functional encryption for the class of NC1, computing class of NC1 function, as long as it's compact, we can already construct I.O. Here compact means that this FE scheme should be mildly efficient. That is, encryption algorithm runs in time, polynomial in the message length, which is necessary, but also somehow sublinearly in the size of the function to be computed. Therefore, we really just need to do bootstrapping of FE scheme to go from degree DFE to computing FE for, to, to FE for computing NC1 functions. And here we need the degree DFE to have really, really good efficiency. That is, the encryption algorithm runs just linearly in the length of the message and completely independent of the size of the function. Okay. All right, so how can we do that? Let's illustrate the idea with the simple locality PRG and then later extend to blockwise locality PRG. So a natural idea already appeared in previous work is to use randomized encoding to reduce degree. 
Well, they will enable us to take an NC1 function f and represent it as an NC0 function, denoted as Re of f. And a very useful fact to remember is that Re of f has very small degree, can be computed in degree four, in particular degree one in the input bits and degree three in the random bits. This is great because then hopefully we can just use the low degree fe to compute Re of f and we'll be done. So let's see. Well here, in order to encrypt a ciphertext, uh, encrypt a message x, what we'll do is we'll take the degree dfe and encrypt it together with some randomness. And then now, to give a secret key for function f, we just need to give a secret key for a function g that computes the randomized encoding. Okay. And the benefit is that because randomized encoding can be computed in degree four, now the degree of the fe is just four. Well, of course, it cannot be just so easy. It turns out that, unfortunately, compact NICs do not hold. Why? Because to encrypt the input, encryption will take time at least linear in the input length. Now the input contains the random table for computing the randomized encoding, which is at least as large as the size of the function, as opposed to be sublinear. Okay, so we do not have compactness. Well, to salvage compactness, the natural idea is to say that I will not directly encrypt the random tip it's on, but rather encrypt it to the seed of a PRG, so that later on in the function g, it will first take the seed, expand it to pseudo random output, and then compute the randomized encoding. Now, believe me, with the math is that with this change, now encryption becomes sublinearly efficient. However, the drawback is that the degree of the functional encryption goes up. Now it becomes three times the PRG degree plus one. Why? Because RE has degree three in the random bits. And these random bits are now computed using PRGs. And this is only bounded by three times the locality of PRG plus one, and this is definitely not tight. To get tight FE bootstrapping, our key idea is to do pre-processing. What do we mean? We would like to decompose this function G into two parts, A and B, so that a part of the computation corresponding to function A can already be done at the encryption time, and the ciphertext encrypts the output of function A. And therefore, at decryption time, we only need to do the rest of the computation corresponding to function B. If this can be done, then the degree of functional encryption decreases, and hopefully that we'll be able to bound it with the locality of the PRG. Well, the only constraint is that we must make sure pre-processing is going to be compact. That is, the output of the function A is the sublinear in the function size. As otherwise, you might well just compute the function G entirely, and you don't need any degree anymore. And the challenge is exactly in doing preprocessing compactly. And let's see a little bit why this is difficult. To look into the RE of f, it can be expanded into a sum of monomials where each monomial will require multiplying together three output bits of the PRG. Since we're not making any assumption about the structure of the PRG, in the worst case, each output bit depends on L randomly chosen seed elements. And let's pretend that this simply requires multiplying in those seed elements together, and this will be the output bit. Okay? This is not really true, but really helps us to see the challenge. Now, to multiply three PRG output bit is requiring us to multiply together three times L randomly chosen seed elements. Well, as you can intuitively judge, is that multiplication between randomly chosen elements are very hard to pre-compute without quickly blowing up the size, because there's not much you can, do, you can do. There's no structure. So given this is difficult, we ask the question, what can we pre-compute then? It turns out what we can pre-compute is the, to multiply together PRG output bits that depend on the same random edges, but two different seeds. Why? Because now in this huge product of different seed elements, each of the columns are in fact aligned. Therefore, we can pre-compute degree three computation between the same random edges across different seeds, 
And with those pre-computed monomials, we can compute the product of PRG output using only the locality of the PRG. Well, it turns out this observation is enough, and with much work, we can massage the function g we want to compute into this form and therefore enable preprocessing. I don't have time to go into the details. Please see the paper for more detail. And now let's just see that whether this idea also extended to block locality and why block locality is enough. So the only thing that changes now is that instead of input bits, we're working with input blocks. And the first difficulty is that each output bit itself can no longer be computed by a low degree or degree L polynomial. Instead, the degree can be way higher. So the first step of the pre-computation is that we're just going to do the brutal way of compute all the monomials over elements in each of the blocks. And luckily, because block size are logarithmic, the blow up is controlled and can be handled. And with those monomials, we can now compute each of the output bit using a degree L polynomial. And now, the trick that we just talked about before with respect to local PRG come back to apply. That we can pre-compute further the degree three computation over those pre-computed monomials and that will facilitate us computing the product of PRG outputs. Okay, with the remaining, I don't know, how many minutes, is that I will try to give you, okay, that's enough. I will try to give you a very high level flavor of how to construct the such degree DFE using exactly degree D multilinear map. Let's start with a thought process, or we'll just only do this thought process, that the only thing I want to compute is a degree D monomial. I want to compute x1, multiply all the way to xd while hiding the input x. The natural way that the first naive idea is that, well, I have multilinear map. Let me just encode this input bits or input elements using inside the different groups. And the pairing will allow us to compute the product in the target group. And this word somehow suffice for the functionality, but security completely falls apart. Why? Because those encodings really do not hide the input, which can be arbitrary fixed value. In fact, we only assume SXDH or multilinear maps, which only give you some security guarantee when the encoded values are random. And this is certainly not true for input bits. <coughs> so the approach in previous work is be to have security, we're going to use some, they used some cryptographic primitive, in particular randomized encoding. Now then imagine that instead of getting encoding of the input bits, you get encoding of a randomized encoding of those input bits for computing monomial. And then you can simply use pairing to compute the output. The problem now is how do I get to this randomized encoding? Previous work showed that it turns out you can leverage their structure to just use a simple functional encryption for computing in a product to get to this encoding of randomized encoding. The only problem is that the degree of the multilinear map overall needed will be two times the degree of the function as opposed to be exactly equal. So in order to shape off this degree of two, this additional factor of two, we really need to do computation with every pairing we need to the computation of the function as opposed to leveraging or computing any other cryptographic primitive. It turns out that our first and a very naive intuition is correct, except that we need to use a better encoding. And this encoding is just a functional encryption for inner product. By recursively composing it, you can implement the first naive simple idea. And there's no degree, waste of degree. Okay, so let me summarize. In this work, we, with two papers, the end message is that we can construct I.O. using trilinear maps and the blockwise local locality three PRG. Now, ahead of us is a very interesting fork with the question hanging above the head is, do there exist trilinear map or not? If it does exist, then we, our next destination is a fastopia. If not, then we still live in the promised land. And thank you.